Um, I was born in Tottenham, moved to Brighton when I was nine, moved to Brixton when I was ten, um, went to normal rubbish rough school and then I went to the Brit school um, for four years, did music. And then when I was 16, I wrote Hometown Glory and somehow that in realising my own voice just kind of popped up. We are sending all our love to Adele at the moment. The poor girl has had to postpone the first two dates for a UK tour after catching a chest infection. She was meant to be playing in Plymouth yesterday and Bournemouth today, but sadly had to pull out. She has not had the best of luck this year as she was also forced to cancel some of her US tour after going down with laryngitis. Adele's prospects came to a screeching halt during the summer of 2011, when she was forced to cancel the remainder of her tour because of laryngitis. After recovering and returning to the tour, Adele was again forced to cancel performances in the fall, because her vocal cord issues didn't clear up. In November 2011, the singer underwent vocal cord surgery. In this clip, Anderson Cooper sat down with the six-time Grammy nominee to ask about her so ordeal. You, you had to have a surgery? Yeah, I had, I had laser surgery, yeah. And what did they actually do? They put a laser down your throat, cut off the polyp, and kind of laser your hemorrhage back together and fix it. To help her heal, she was also ordered not to speak a word for much of November and December. That's got to be hard. Yeah, it was really hard. I sense you like to talk. Yeah, I love talking. <laughs> So how did you communicate for five weeks? By pad. I had a notepad and I also had an application on my phone and that you type the words into and then it speaks it. But the great thing is because I love to swear. Most of you can't swear, but I found this one app where you can swear. Few months after, in February 2012, Adele won six Grammys for 21, tying with Beyonce for the most awards won in a single night. Like the cherry on a Sunday, Adele was named one of Time's 100 Most Influential People of the Year. Globally. 21 was the biggest selling musical release for both 2011 and 2012, and helped revitalize lagging sales of the UK and US music industry. With 31 million copies sold worldwide, the album is one of the best selling albums of all time. Adele. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Let's talk about the new record, obviously. Okay. It's called 21. Yeah. Um, actually, let's talk about the single first. Okay. Um, I think. And I was a big fan of your first album. I think it's the best thing you've ever done. And Thank I, you. I, I genuinely mean that. Thank you very much. Is that the feeling you've got about it as well? Do you I mean, that? I do love it. I just love the vibe of it. I think it was um, it was kind of a very conscious decision to kind of go a bit more down a bluesier route compared to 19 and make something that was kind of more relevant and re representative of who I am like now and my age and stuff like that because I think people always think I'm a very serious person especially off the back of 19 because it's quite a moody record yeah um, and I'm not you know I'm really sarcastic and really like cheeky mm. and stuff like that and always trying to crack a joke and make people laugh so I think that Rolling in the Deep and there's also another song on the record that are kind of more relevant to that and I really got into Wanda Jackson who's this like wild fierce rockabilly star yeah and her song Fun Little of Love which is actually one of her pretty much unknown songs it sounds really full spectre and um, really inspired I was just kind of like it rubbed off from rolling in the deep when I started writing it so yeah. I, I do really love it yeah. in January 2012 Adele was seen vacationing with a new man in Florida visiting the Everglades National Park soon after they were seen on the beach they were seen boarding an alligator spotting our boat the man is Simon Christopher Conaghy the CEO of Drop for a Drop, a charity that provides clean drinking water to developing countries. Adele had previously told her fans she would join Twitter if they followed Carnegie's charity on the social media platform, further adding to speculation they were dating. Soon after Adele and Carnegie were first spotted together, it was reported that he had started his relationship with Adele before his divorce from fashion stylist Clary Fisher had been finalized. However, Adele denied these reports in a blog post on her official website, stating that they were in a relationship, but that Konecki had been divorced for four years. 
Adele's announced she's pregnant with her first child. The 24-year-old revealed the news to fans via her website and says she and boyfriend Simon Konecki are over the moon and very excited. The Someone Like You singer's been dating the 36-year-old since last summer and went public with the relationship in January. Adele recently spoke of her desire to become a mum. During a magazine interview, she said it was her goal to have three sons by the time she's 30. In February, she bought a £7 million mansion in Sussex for her and Simon to live in. On October 19, 2012, Adele and Simon welcomed their first child together. After months of speculation, the child's name was revealed to be Angelo James. Back in 2011, Sony Pictures president of music, Leah Valak, suggested to the James Bond film producers that they ask Adele to record Skyfall, a theme song for their next Bond film. Valak thought that Adele would be a good choice to ask to record a Bond theme song, because her music had a soulful, haunting, evocative quality. Which Valak considered would bring back the classic Shirley Bassey feel associated with several early Bond films. Adele, who had just released her second album 21, admitted that initially she was a little hesitant about agreeing to write a Bond theme song. On meeting with the Skyfall film crew, the singer had told Skyfall director, Sam Mendes, that she felt as though she was not the person they were looking for, because her songs are very personal. Mendes simply told her to write a personal song, and asked her to use Carly Simon's Nobody Does It Better, from The Spy Who Loved Me, as an inspiration. Adele left the meeting with the script of Skyfall, and upon reading it, decided that it was a no-brainer, as she fell in love with the film's plot. Producer Paul Epworth, who had worked with Adele on 21, was brought in to help her write the song. Adele stated that she enjoyed working to a brief and set of guidelines, even though it was something she had never done before. Skyfall was released on October 5, 2012, as part of the Global James Bond Day, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the release of Dr. No, the first James Bond film. And the Golden Globe goes to... Yes. Skyfall! Yeah. This is the first win and first nomination for Adele, who is part of this winning team. She has previously won nine Grammys and four American Music Awards. for a night out with my friend Ida, we're new mums. We've literally come for a night out. I was not expecting this. Thank you so much, so good. Oh, it's very strange to be here. Um, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your world for a night. It's amazing. We've been pissing ourselves laughing all <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank the Hollywood Foreign Press. I never thought I'd ever say that. Sony Pictures, oh, sorry. MGM, um, Sam Mendes, Paul Letworth, who I did the song with, Daniel Craig, being such a wonderful bond. Um, and this is for my boyfriend, Simon, who convinced me to do it, and my lovely son. Thank you so much. Following the release of 21, Adele revealed to Q magazine that she had written seven songs for her third studio album, which she promised would be more intimate and stripped down than her albums 19 and 21. Soon after that, Adele was considering quitting music. However, in early 2012 she announced she was simply taking a hiatus from music, in order to take time and live a little bit. Her hiatus from music came to an end after the birth of her first child, in October 2012, with Adele stating her son inspired her to write and start recording music again. Before the album's recording came underway, Adele made a conscious decision not to try and create another 21, and would not make another heartbreak record. The album was rumored to be released in May 2012, although this was postponed due to Adele's recovery from her ongoing vocal illness. Despite no album being released, Adele instead released Skyfall. Although Adele herself had never openly said this, her manager Jonathan Dickens, revealed that the record following 21 would be released when the time is right. On February 10, 2013, Adele confirmed that she was in the very early stages of her third album and was having meetings while staying in Los Angeles for the 85th Academy Awards. And the Oscar.
Oscar goes to. There it is, Skyfall. And Adele then, Atkins and Paul This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Adele Atkins and Paul Hepburn. Thank you, this is amazing. Um, oh, I'd just like to thank Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson at Eon Productions, Sony Pictures, MGM, Paul Letworth for, um, oh God, <laughs> Make, believing in me all the time. And my man, I love you, baby. <laughs> Paul Letworth. Initially recording sessions for 25 were unsuccessful, in which Adele suffered from writer's block. Adele rescheduled the album's recording, stating she did not feel ready but returned to the studio when her son was 18 months old, which inspired her to write an album about motherhood. In an interview on BBC One, it was revealed that a whole album about being a mother was written, and then scrapped, because she thought the material was too boring. Um, this record, the process of making this record, as I understand it, was not as easy as 21. No, it's been the hardest process I've ever had. T tell me about the initial writing sessions. Let's start there. They were fun. I did them mainly with my friends, like not like people. That, I mean, the people that work in music, like they're not just random people. That like, but um, and it was fun. And but it was clear to all of us really quickly that, and they were brilliant and they're amazing and they're talented. But I just wasn't ready. I couldn't focus. I just I didn't have any ideas. Um, and also that was sort of the initiation of me realizing that I was now entering the studio all the time without any lyrics, and that my studio sessions would start from scratch. Whereas on 21, I had all the lyrics. So I would go in and we'd wow. knock out a tune that people know now from 21. And it would be done in a couple of days because I'd have all the lyrics, you know, and I'd have a few chord ideas or I'd have BB ideas or percussion ideas. And stuff Why did like you that. want to try it this way without lyrics? I didn't want to try it. I wanted to go and live lyrics, but I didn't have time at home. Like, I, I, don't, I don't work at home at all. I don't even play guitar at home because I'm just frightened I'm going to wake the baby up. So there's work and there's home. You yeah. separate those two. Oh, me. yeah. Oh. Down the middle. Why is that so important to you? I don't take me work home, and I don't take me life to work either. Hmm. It's too, it gets too emotional. <laughs> okay, back to those, those writing sessions. How did you know when it wasn't working? When the songs, even I listen to I'd be like, these are shit. Like, yeah. these aren't emotional at all. Or, 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 what do I even mean by that? Like, I would normally always know exactly what I mean when I'm singing, or whatever I'm writing about or singing about. So yeah, when I was just like, nah. And, you know, and I blagged it like, with myself. I was like, this is, this is fine, this will do, this is great. Just go get the record out, get the record out, get the record out. And, um, and then I played it for a couple of people and they were like, if you want to do it, then do it, but wouldn't recommend it. How was that, hearing that? Oh, I, I knew it myself anyway. I'm pretty all right at taking critique. As long as the critique comes at the right time in the right tone, I can take it all day long. British singer Adele has made a record-breaking comeback with her single Hello, becoming the first artist ever to sell a million downloads in the first week. The song is off her new album 25 to be released later this month. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the Art Docs Art channel to never miss new uploads. If you like this video then give it a thumbs up, and leave your thoughts in the comment section, and share if you care.